Okay, uh, obviously coming off an extremely tough loss um, at home. I'll say it again, I really appreciate our crowd. They were unbelievable. We just didn't get it done. Didn't get it done offensively, defensively, special teams, and got beat handling. So what we did is we looked at our film. Um, you know, we have to correct the things, and we put that thing to bed, and we're moving forward. Uh, really focusing defensively, we still have to figure out a way to get more pressure on the quarterback. Third down, uh, we're going to need to correct that. We need to work on that offensively. You know, it's really holding on the football. The four turnovers, very uncharacteristic. Uh, and then we got to score when we get in the red zone. Uh, you know, flipping the page, you know, playing Florida, they had a week off, but you look at them, they have a talented roster. Um, you know, so we're going to have to play good football and really just focus on us putting that thing to bed. And uh, it, that's, in the, that's in the rear view mirror. You know, we're three and one. Our goals are intact. That's what we told our team yesterday. So we're looking forward to uh, the next game. Questions? Coach, you have experience playing Florida from your years at Auburn. Uh, what have you told your team about what they're going to step into on Saturday night? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be loud. There's no doubt about that. In 2019, it was extremely loud. The circumstances were a little bit different, but we know that it's going to be loud. We're going to have to handle the noise and everything that goes with it. Gus, you have a uh, relationship with Billy Napier. I know his dad was a high school yeah. coach for many years. I know you probably had some high school connections there. Yeah. Well, what, do you, what, what is your experience with Billy, and, and what do you think of him? What yeah, he's doing I mean, he was an assistant at Alabama, you know, when, when I was at Auburn. That's really the uh, main extent of it. And, um, you know, so I'm not knowing, knowing a little bit. Coach, uh, it seemed like the game plan of letting RJ Hardy dominate just got away from you guys. Is that the plan to reestablish in, in Gainesville? Yeah, I mean, of course, they had something to do with it. you got to give Colorado credit, too. But, uh, you know, that's a, obviously, you know, it starts with, with RJ. we got to find creative ways to, if you have a situation like that again, to get him the ball. Obviously, you know, he had the long touchdown pass. But, you know, we got to be able to run the football, play action, and do our thing. And, uh, and they did a good job, you know, containing that. You mentioned it earlier. How do you explain the challenges in the red zone? Yeah, um, we got to do a better job coaching, uh, you know, executing and everything that goes with it. So that'll definitely be a focus. That was a little bit uncharacteristic too, but hey, uh, you, you live and learn and you got to find a way to, uh, to improve on that. And, you know, after a game like that, you look at areas that you have to improve and they were glaring the other night. So that's going to give us an opportunity this week to focus more on that. We got to be better, and I really expect us to be better, really, in all those areas I talked about at the very first. What surprises you, though, in a week four to have seen those sorts of deficiencies? Well, I mean, you got to keep, you got to understand, we're still growing as a team. Uh, you know, even after we won the exciting game, you know, we had the 40, 50 new players, we're still growing and learning. And uh, so that's what we did. I mean, obviously, we didn't get it done, but our guys. I really like the way our team responded last night in practice. They came out in practice. You could tell they put it behind them. Um, and then we got to continue to grow as a team. You know, we have four games under, under our belt. I'll tell you this. I know for sure we are capable of being a good team. I said that the other uh, other game with that. That's just one game. we got to learn from it. I really expect our leadership to step up and do that and be better moving forward. Don Struble, Black and Gold, Dan Ray. Coach, last season the Gators ranked 79th in the country in stopping the run. This season thus far they've fallen to 109th while allowing 189 yards on the ground per game. What is the utilization of the running back room going to look like for you guys heading into Saturday and how do you hope to exploit this matchup? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we just kind of talked a little bit about it. I mean, you know, we're a run play action team. We, we, when we run the football effectively, it opens up everything else. And so, We've got to find ways to run the football effectively, and they do have some talented guys. I mean, you watch them on film, they're, they're a talented group on defense, and they've had a week off, and there could be some different things that, that we'll see. We've got to be able to adjust and, and be successful running the football. The last time you went to Florida Field, you had a true freshman quarterback. This time you go with a guy that's a veteran. He's not only a veteran, he's won there before. How significant is that? Yeah, I, I think that's really important any time a guy has experience. Um, you know, before he's an experienced guy, um, you know, so we're, we're looking forward to him leading us, you know, this week. You've been in these pressure cooker jobs before. You're not particularly close with Billy, but you kind of know what he's going through. Any advice you would give to him knowing that circumstance up there? After we play him, I may, not right now. <laughs> uh, Coach, you were able to outgame Colorado in terms of yards, 461 to 480. 
18. Uh, what needs to happen to convert that into points? Well, I mean, the four turnovers, I mean, that's, that's what, that was a big key, you know, and then our third down defense, I mean, the, those things really stick out. Like, you're, you're not going to beat anybody with four turnovers. That, that is a quality team, and that, that's got to be corrected. I mean, that was very, very disappointing. You mentioned the other night that Miles Montgomery is going to be out for some time. Does that lend itself more opportunity for Penny Boo to fill that, that number two running back role, or do we see more KJ running it as we did against Colorado? Well, I mean, every game will present it different, but you know, Penny and, and then Johnny, you can't leave Johnny out too. And we got, you know, even, if, even if he can't go, we got three quality running backs. And so, you know, each game we'll have a different plan, but you know, our, our quarterback still will be a run threat, and each game will present itself different ways. Now that you've played four games, have any players decided they plan to opt out and not play the rest of the season? Not that I know of right now. Coach, with this game coming up, you said earlier, all your goals are still in front of you. Besides the, the loss that happened, going into Gainesville, in-state game, with everything still in front, how important and how big is this game come Saturday? Yeah, it's important because it's the next one. I mean, you know, the way we play, you know, we need to redeem ourselves. And so it's another opportunity. Just happens to be they're the next ones on the schedule, so uh, you know we need to play good football. Because the, and the, along those lines, in the big picture of things, the state of Florida has always been Florida, Florida State, Miami, Big Three. How important is it for the perception of, of UCF growing to be a bigger and be a part of that? How important is it for this game? Yeah, for that I mean it, it, it's important. It's part of recruiting. There's no doubt about it. In the big picture, we understand that, but it just happens to be the next one. And like I said, coming off the type of loss that we had. This is going to be about us, and we need to get our stuff together, and we need to play good football. And it's an opportunity for for the next game. And it's a big opportunity. Coach, coming into the season, you know Ted Roof had a bit a big blitz heavy package, and he's a big blitz guy. But it just seems that you guys have struggled to get to the quarterback in these first four games. How confident are you in the guys that they can eventually? Yeah, start I, I don't know for sure. We got the guys that can do it, and that's going to be a big key. And, and like I said, that'll be a huge focus on this week. Uh, to do it, we've been close. We, you know, we got some good eternal pressure last week. He extended some plays that you know outside the pocket and everything that goes with that. So we've got to continue to to help our guys out, and uh, but we will get better in that area. From a game plan perspective against Colorado, what's something you wish you could do over uh, in preparation? For this? There's a lot of things you wish you could do over any time it's like that. Any time you have four, four turnovers, you can't get off the field. Third down, I mean. There's a lot of things in it. And like I said, when you have a loss like that, I mean, it starts at the top, it starts with me. So I've got to do a better job with our coaches, with everything that goes with it. And, uh, and that's what we're going to do. Coach, this is a unique matchup that you guys are heading into as the defense will have to prepare to face two quarterbacks in Graham Mertz and DJ right. Blackway. Uh, what kind of adjustments are going to be made to address this matchup? Yeah, well, both of them are talented guys. They're both a little bit different. And, uh, so we're going to have to do a, a good job, you know, uh, trying to take away what they do the best, you know. So, but both of them are very quality quarterbacks. On that note, do you do you sense that they like to accomplish things differently with each of those guys, or they run the offense exactly the same way? Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of differences. I mean, obviously they're going to play to each other's strengths with that. You can see that. Um, and we're just going to have to be prepared for to make play of them. I guess you had uh, Miles was 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 banged up. Obviously, you talked about John Walker last week. What's his status? And is there any other health issues or guys maybe they're banged up that you may yeah. have uh, some questionable going into this game? Yeah, yeah. John Walker will not play, um, and uh, yeah, I, I think everyone else. I mean, we're a little banged up, but it looks like you know everybody was out there practicing and all that yesterday. Um, so and then Miles, I, I don't know. You know, I know he's wanting to get back up. He's a great competitor, but uh, this. Uh, right now, I couldn't tell you. Right, real quick, Trent Whittemore obviously has experience yeah. having played at, at Florida. How important is it to have a guy like that? Maybe I mean, he wasn't there for maybe a year under Billy, but still, how the guy who has connections to that program is and what he's been able to do so far for you guys. Yeah, well. first of all, when he's known, he's one of our better offensive players. He's one of the dirty work guys that he makes us go. He didn't get his name in the paper like the rest of those guys, but he is so critical. He made an unbelievable play on that one. And the fact that he has experience playing there, that definitely helps with really the other players and everything that goes with it. And, but, uh, you know, he's, I'm real proud of him. He's, he's had a great year so far.
Coach, you talked a lot about how the team is going to learn a lot about themselves following the yeah. loss to Colorado. What, what, what's the best thing you think they could learn? I mean, you know, in life, it's just, football is just like life. You can learn so many lessons through the game of football. How you handle yourself after you get embarrassed and you have a, a tough, a tough loss and becoming a man, in my experience, is teams that grow from something like that, that, that that's, that's winning football, that's winning attitude. And I really expect our team to do that. I know coaches have to do the same thing, but uh, it's a great opportunity for us. It's a great opportunity for you know coaches and players to reach deep down in and be better next time out. Like I said, we're still learning about our team. We're still growing as a team, I and mean, that's just the reality. And uh, we got a great opportunity this week. So we just got to we got to get better. And I really expect us to do that. You had the uh, game already at TCU. How does having had a road game already, you think, help you? Out? No, it's helped. And like I said, the unique thing, we've had one of the highest of the highest experience, and we had one of the lowest of the lowest experience. We've had both. And now that we've had both, we're capable of growing as a team, and like I expect us to do. You've elevated UCS recruiting since you arrived. Obviously, the Big 12 helps a lot with that. And you've gone head-to-head -head with you know, the so-called former Big 3 in Florida. So how important is a game like this? I know you obviously beat yeah. Florida at the end of 2021 yeah. in the bowl game. But how important is a game like this to show yeah. you know, how, what would a win do to help recruiting? No, right? there's no doubt. I mean, any time you have an in-state opponent, it helps recruiting and everything that goes with it. And um, so in that aspect, there's no doubt. Hey, Mark, what are the biggest challenges for you as a coach? in an environment like that? You've been there before, you've been in a lot of these live places. What are the biggest challenges for you? And then also, what did you gain from that experience of being there in 2019? Yeah, 2019, it was off the charts loud. I do remember that. Um, you know, we got Clary in, and you know, they, they had a really good team. And, you know, so it's just, a, it's a road game. Uh, I do think the TCU game will help us with the, the experience of being on the road in a loud environment. But, you know, we expect it to be, you know, Especially loud being an in-state opponent, so our guys understand that. And, you know, we got we got a lot of veterans. We got a lot of veterans played a lot of football um, in big environments. Obviously, Trent, like we talked about being one of them. So uh, hopefully that will help us. Coach, there was still a few good things to take out of the loss to Colorado. One of them being KJ Jefferson being the team's leading rusher. I mean, what have you seen from him and how he's growing as the season's progressing? Yeah, I mean, you know, KJ's a veteran guy. And, did some things with his legs that were keying on the running backs, and so that helped us. Um, like I said, he's uh, his experience, you know, in a game like this. I think that helps too. One person that hasn't been brought up as far as uh, participation is concerned, Sheldon Arnold. Uh, he was on the sideline for yeah. the game against uh, Colorado. Didn't play a lot. Is, is, yeah. he, is he good to go? Yeah, he, he'll, he'll be better. Uh, I think he didn't play, but I think three plays. But I expect him to play more this week. Uh, coach, uh, you're heading into a hostile environment and you're facing a team that are beneficiaries of a bye week and extra rest. What do you have to do physically and mentally to rebound? Yeah, I, I really, you know, I just told our guys we're focused on us this week. And we gotta, we gotta attack those things that we need to improve on and, and go there and be ready to play. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.